Welcome to the Lemon Tube Amiga Workbench Guides. This video was made possible by our sponsors on Patreon. If you'd like to support these videos, why not check out our Lemon Tube Amiga Club subscription page, where you'll find all the latest perks and freebies. Now that we've looked at the C commands, it's time to check out the S directory, where we will find the startup sequence. And the startup sequence is what makes the Amiga start up. So to begin with, let's check out a very basic startup sequence that we can find on the Amiga Deluxe Paint disc in the S directory. The S directory and the startup sequence is what the Amiga will look for on the disc or on the hard drive as soon as it loads up. So you can see there is an echo command here which basically prints things on the screen. It will say echo loading workbench 1.2 and if it exists in the system directory then it will add the path to that drawer, that system drawer it will also end that set of patterns if it doesn't find it it will bind the drivers together which binds together any external drivers that you have in the expansion drawer and then it will load workbench and then it will end the CLI which will close down the CLI window which means the icons will pop up and the screen window will close down. So that's a very basic introduction to the startup sequence. So let's take another look and there are more advanced startup sequences. This now is Workbench 3.1 so you can see there are extra bits in here. Ed startup is simply a text file, same with shell startup and I'm not sure what half of the rest of them do but definitely startup sequence is the one that we need to edit it's a basic text file and for that we'll need to use the editor which is a command which comes into Amiga DOS so the edit command simply ed and so if we type ed and then startup sequence making sure that we spell that correctly then that should load the startup sequence into the editor you can see on the screen on the top you can see various blanks if it's got a semicolon on the top it means it's a blank line an rem line which means it won't it will basically ignore that line so that's just a bit of text at the top the first thing it does is look in the c directory for the set patch command and it runs that quietly so it doesn't print anything on the screen that means the AGA is switched on. It then looks in the C drawer for the version command and it runs the version command nil. That means it doesn't print anything out on the screen. The output goes to the nil, which is a blank buffer. So it then looks at the C command. It then adds 15 buffers to drive DF0, which is the floppy drive. And then if those don't work, they fail at 21. So somewhere along the line if version doesn't work it fails at 21 and it skips that bit if it manages to get this far it makes is the make directory C it makes RAM drive uh, the T directory in RAM and all those other RAM disks and then it copies the ENVARC directory to RAM all of it it will then use the resident command to make the C assign command Resident in memory will remember the C assign command so we don't have to type C assign every single time. Same with the execute command, it will memorize that in memory so we don't have to put the path in every time we want to execute something. It will then use the assign command already in memory to assign ENV to the RAM ENV drive that we've just created. T to RAM T, clips to the clipboards, Rex to Rex, printers, and locale libs and help as well it will then load up the bind drivers command which is again it will load up any drivers for external hardware that it finds in the expansion drawer I've never actually found any drivers that do that but that's what that does it will then mount any DOS drivers so if you've got any DOS drivers that say mount virtual C drives and virtual um, PC drives you can mount them from this command otherwise you really don't need it but if it finds any devs DOS drivers it will try to mount them all with that command if it exists in the devs drawer a monitors drawer then it will try to if it exists VGA only it will try to run that VGA only monitor driver 
and if it can't find that VGA monitor driver it will end that command if there's an if then there has to be an end if and then C list it lists the monitors available in monitors and it types them out to a text file which it saves in T which we know that is in RAM and then once it's created that it creates a list of monitor drivers and then it executes those monitor drivers to run those and then it deletes them from RAM and ends if it then sets the environment up with the language which is English it sets the environment up workbench which is dollar workbench which I guess you can change to anything same with the kickstart the kickstart is the kickstart that it gets off the ROM and that depends on the ROM that you're booting from of course and then unset workbench unset kickstart again no idea why those are there I've never needed to use those but those are there anyway to stop setting the workbench so it then looks in C it then adds the data types and adding data types PNG JPEG GIF that kind of thing it will add any data types that it finds any drivers from there it then looks in C and runs the iPrefs command which loads up the advanced workbench screen modes and then it looks at con clip which enables the clipboard so if you highlight any words like this and then you press the Amiga command followed by C it will copy it and then Amiga V will paste that path it looks at path nil RAM it, la it adds sys utilities C uh, rec system as a path if it exists the file uses to our subsequence it will then execute it and if it can't find it it will end that particular sub routine and then resident execute remove it removes the execute removes the sign then loads workbench icons and ends CLI so it loads the icons right at the end and then close the CLI window that's the command line interface window that you can see at the moment so when the Amiga loads it goes through all of these things setting all of these things up goes through all of them it loads up the user stories up if there is one and execute all those commands and this is the basic editor where you can see we can load and save there is some basic information about this very basic editor and you can see by holding down the right mouse button there is basic options in the pull down menus to find things and delete lines and redisplay everything and if you want the advanced functions you can have to press escape and that will bring up the advanced function command line interface and that all that will do pressing escape is it will put um, an asterisk sign on the very bottom corner of the screen like this and from the asterisk you can then put any of the commands in there that you want it to execute so if we put store j in there that will join the next line to the previous line and it saves you having to type that so store j joining lines together it's very helpful and there are a long list of quick commands that I used to know for scrolling the screen up and down and things like that using the advanced command line interface and we know if we do store D that will delete the entire row that we're on at the moment the entire line it will delete it and I think maybe store U undeletes it as well maybe there is an undelete function I can't remember but D deletes we know that J if we do star SA that will save everything that we've typed out onto the disk but it won't quit the application if we type Q that will quit the application and it won't save a single thing that we've done so far it will send say are you sure you want to quit you haven't saved a damn thing are you sure edits will be lost confirm to quit and if we want to save and quit at the same time we do X uppercase or lowercase escape and X will save everything that we've typed in and close the editor at the same time so that's how you use the basic editor to edit the startup sequence this is the 3.1 startup sequence that comes with every startup sequence on 3.1 it has to go through all of these tasks